Hello everyone and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today as we are going to speak about how you can add audio or video narrations to your courses. My name is Paulina, I am a community manager at iSpring and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. As our speakers today we have two awesome gentlemen, Brian Tarr and Michael Gokrev. Hello guys! Hi everybody! Uh, Michael Kokarev, uh, with, his with his over eight experience and technical support, is now writing amazing articles for the whole iSpring audience. And Brian Tarr is our systems engineer. He worked in iSpring tech support as well, and now he's creating outstanding video tutorials, which you might have seen on our official website or YouTube channel. We also have today Valerie Lett. Hi, Valerie. How are you doing? Hi, Paulina. I'm great. Thank you. Valerie is our customer care manager, and she primarily works with clients, helping them to decide how iSpring can be a perfect fit for their needs. And at this point, I'm ready to pass over the mic to Michael. So, Michael, you're more than welcome to begin. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I appreciate if you pass uh, screen sharing thing to me. Either. I got you. You guys, do you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so let's start. Yeah, uh, it's Michael, and uh, as Paulina mentioned before, I work on, on the tech side of things at iSpring Solutions. And today we're going to talk about um, uh, how to add... Oop. Hey, guys, do you, do you still uh, see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool. We can see it perfectly. Uh, yeah, so this is the topic of our today's webinar, uh, how to add audio and video narrations to your courses. Uh, it is a fact that narrated e-learning courses are easier to understand and to remember. A uh, good voiceover shouldn't repeat the entire text on the slides, how to add audio, video, narrations, like that, uh, but point out important things uh, such as charts and graphs and images, uh, if you have them in your courses. This presentation doesn't have any, any charts and graphs, but I can draw some. Okay. So, let's begin. Um, so, why do you need um, uh, audio and video narrations. Um, so the, the first thing is to uh, is to help uh, your users, your customers, to uh, easily understand and and remember slides that you have in your electronic course because uh, you will not be there probably when they when they will be looking at these courses. So uh, this is very cool uh, if your presentations uh, speak for themselves. And uh, if, if your uh, audio narration just follows everything that's on the slide, it's more like a speech generator, which, uh, which is a robotic kind of thing, right? So we want to, to keep our uh, audio narrations live and uh, friendly, so user, users uh, will have their entertainment as they learn. Also, uh, your uh, narration helps to deliver information to people with disabilities which makes your courses section 508 compliant. It, this is very important because uh, it is uh, one of the must-have uh, must options uh, that's on the uh, requirements list for many course designers. So what's the best way to record and to manage audio and video narrations? That's the main topic of, of our today's webinar. Uh, yeah, so here how it sounds like on the promo. Add narrations to your courses like a boss. So let's start doing that. At first we start with uh, PowerPoint recording options and uh, uh, probably uh, everybody from you know that you can uh, uh, insert audio to your uh, PowerPoint slides, like a song or some uh, sound effect, but also you can record uh, audio right in PowerPoint. Let me bring up my, uh, my presentation here. So here we go. 
So uh, in order to insert, uh, to record an audio uh, to your presentation, uh, you need to switch to the insert tab. Let me turn on my magnifier. So uh, yeah, the insert tab. Then we go all the way to the right and click audio and select record audio. So the record sound window pops up and uh, we can record the audio for the first slide. Sorry for that. Uh, so check test recording, one, two, three. As we done recording, uh, we can play back uh, the recording. You probably don't, don't hear it, but I do in my headphones. Uh, if I'm not satisfied with the recording, I can re-record um, this, uh, this sound again, or if it's all, all okay, I can click OK and go ahead uh, and uh, do some other uh, things in, in my presentation. So from here, I can switch to the Playback tab, and here we have uh, uh, a few audio editing options like trim audio, fade in, fade out. We can uh, uh, customize volume and by default the audio will start on click and uh, if we want to have uh, um, automatic voiceover we would need to click every uh, single audio to be played uh, automatically. So uh, this is not convenient if you have uh, tons of uh, audio files added to your presentations, but you, uh, but if you have only few, uh, it's, it's okay to do that uh, in PowerPoint. So also, uh, if we have uh, animations on the slide, like here, uh, this slide has three animations, and it also has the voiceover, and uh, in order to synchronize our voiceover uh, with the uh, animations here, we we should go to the slideshow tab, turn on magnifier again, and then uh, click rehearse timings. So this tiny little window will uh, pops up and uh, it'll allow us to rehearse timings as we speak. So the timings of the on-slide uh, animation effects, right? So uh, we can preview this uh, particular uh, slide in this presentation by clicking Shift F5, function, function 5. So, as you can see, um, these uh, animations are, uh, are set to appear on mouse click. However, after we rehearse timings, they appear automatically in PowerPoint. Also, uh, if we need to record the narration for several slides, uh, like for, for the entire presentation here, we need to, uh, to click uh, Record Slideshow here, and whether start re recording from beginning or start, start recording from the current slide. So let's start re recording from, well, either way, it's the first slide. Uh, here we can select uh, whether we record only slide and animation timings or spoken narrations, uh, ink, and uh, our highlighters and laser pointer. So uh, using this approach, you can record uh, an audio that will play through uh, several slides. Uh, so let's go back to, to this presentation. We will learn how to record uh, small audio pieces, how to rehearse timings, and how to record slideshows. But uh, are there any uh, limitations and drawbacks in PowerPoint? Yeah, you might, you might ask. Uh, yes, unless you want to keep it really simple, uh, like I showed you before. Uh, the, mo the main drawback, I think, is that you cannot select the audio recording device. For example, if you have a good voice over microphone connected to your computer, you just can't select it because uh, the built-in microphone will work by default and produce mediocre recording quality. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can cannot select another, another microphone as well. Uh, you will just need to tinker with uh, 
uh, Windows uh, recording device settings and try to select a default microphone, but it's not at all convenient. I mean, it's not how it's done in any other um, audio application that has uh, that that might have uh, sound recording in it. Summarizing, summarizing all that, you you cannot easily select recording device, which is a huge drawback to uh, for for all voice over actors for for all voice actors. So uh, also, uh, when we record uh, an audio for the entire slideshow. If our uh, slides uh, have uh, uh, transitions uh, between them, like like this one, if I set like a push transition, as this transition goes uh, during that time, the audio will not be captured from your microphone, uh, which will result in uh, hiccups uh, in your resultant uh, audio uh, after you record it. So. Don't be surprised, it's the way how PowerPoint works. And last but not least, uh, in PowerPoint you cannot easily pull out your recorded audio for post-processing in some other application like Audacity. Because it's all inside of the PowerPoint file, PPTX file. And uh, you need to resave it and then re-embed, which will make your course creation lifecycle much more complicated and from uh, all of our customers uh, among all years of my experience with, uh, in tech support, nobody ever done that. Maybe some of you guys on the webinar uh, can kind of do that, but uh, anyway, there are some better ways of of doing that. And this is where iSpring steps in to help you record good audio narrations uh, way more conveniently. Yeah, uh, yeah, iSpring is. People say, uh, like, uh, iSpring is like heaven for your voiceovers in PowerPoint. It sounds uh, completely cheesy, but I know, but it's true anyway, because it has everything you need. And uh, there is no uh, limit to possible improvements, and we are constantly pol polishing it up here and there, and uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, I will bring up my another presentation. Yeah, this, this presentation has been recorded by, by our friend and partner, Rick Zanotti. So he used um, iSpring Suite uh, and uh, the iSpring Manage Narration window to record uh, voiceover for this presentation. Yeah, actually it is a, a video narration, but it appears the same in the iSpring Narration Editor. So, as you can see, uh, with iSpring, uh, there is a special workplace for uh, recording and editing your, uh, your voiceovers or podcasts for, for your slides, right? So, here we can record the audio for, for the entire presentation and synchronize it really, really easily. And uh, you can see these uh, yellow markers here. Uh, they stand for... Uh, for animation steps. So these are on-click animations and uh, from here we can uh, preview and uh, these animations uh, are already synchronized with the with the audio. So yeah, you can see as Rick as Rick starts speaking, um, animations uh, start start appearing. So, um, guys, you just uh, gotta test it out and uh, check how how it's easy to uh, to work with the iSpring narration editor. Also, if you don't need to record the narration for the entire slide. Uh, for the entire presentation, I mean, you can go back and uh, right from the main iSpring ribbon, you can click record audio or record video and record, like in PowerPoint, a little piece of audio just for, for one slide. And also uh, synchronize uh, animation steps as you, as you go. So, yeah. Uh, 
are there any any questions so far about uh, about iSpring and about PowerPoint options of recording audio? Yeah, um, so far we were only asked if uh, you guys are going to go over iSpring features, and yes, Brian will do it in a bit, and I think that mm -hmm. at this point we are ready to pass over to Brian. Yeah, and uh, one more point. Um, in uh, all audio files that you uh, and video files that you record with uh, iSpring are recorded as separate files here uh, in the project folder, so if you if you're a kind of um, audio guy, you can just send them and open them with uh, with some uh, advanced audio editor, post-process your audio and then put it back and uh, your audio or video will be post-processed in your presentation. Just uh, remember, don't uh, change the length of the audio file uh, in order to uh, keep uh, audio and um, animations on, on your slides synchronized to each other. And so, Mike, yeah. Michael, are you going to go over that in our next week's webinar about the project folder? Yeah, that, that will be the, the, next, uh, uh, the next topic for the webinar, uh, how to uh, manage your projects. And uh, I'll, I'll also um, uh, tell, tell you guys about um, about post-processing audio and video after you recorded it in iSpring and uh, uh, if, if you need to use uh, some third-party application. Uh, however, um, yeah, I just completely forgot to mention that, but uh, you actually don't even need to do that because uh, we have this, uh, this very cool um, video and audio editor here. So on the uh, narration editor, you can click Edit Clip and the new window pops up for iSpring video or audio editor. So here you can trim, uh, you can cut uh, unwanted parts of your video. Uh, you can adjust volume and uh, the best thing you can do here is to remove noise because uh, noisy audio narrations probably distract more than a lack of them at all. So after we've done uh, editing our audio or video, we can go and save and close and go back and uh, we, uh, uh, we will get the, uh, the edited uh, piece of audio or video uh, without leaving uh, power, uh, PowerPoint and iSpring environment at all. So, uh, yeah, most of our, of our customers are happy with the uh, uh, audio editor. If you have any, any questions about that or any suggestions of what you use, like fade in, fade out. It's not there uh, yet, but uh, it's on our roadmap. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you guys are always welcome to throw in any uh, feature requests. Uh, we'll be happy to, uh, to look into them. Hey, Michael, we have a question from Sheila. Um, okay. If you want to narrate an entire presentation, you should use the insert option and avoid the record audio option on the main menu tab. What would you recommend? So, uh, in iSpring, uh, if you want to record the uh, narration for the entire slideshow, of course, you would need to use iSpring uh, narration editor. And here, how you how you would do that? Let me just. And what about PowerPoint? Uh, so the question was about PowerPoint, right? I assume so, yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, in iSpring, you do it in iSpring Narration Editor. In uh, PowerPoint, you would do that in, uh, uh, in Slideshow, Record Slide, Show, and I would go Start Recording. And uh, here is the presentation about uh, creating a great podcast from low to high budget. So I can uh, switch my slides and animation steps, and I can narrate it uh, in the in the real time. So we kind of do synchronization here on the fly. So here's one uh, animation. Here's another one. Uh, and as we stop recording, yeah, I need to click X here. Right. Oops. 
right here. To go back to the presentation, and uh, this audio file will uh, will play across slides. So, um, so second slide uh, contains another part of this of this audio, and here is the third part for for the third slide. So, um, yeah, there is a tiny thing that I would notice. Um, after you uh, record uh, the audio using uh, using PowerPoint, you cannot uh, change the length of the slide because if you here it, <coughs> sorry uh, here it's set by uh, by our uh, recording tool. It's uh, ten seconds. If we want to uh, make it longer, uh, there will there will be no audio in the end of this slide. So this is kind of draw back to that as well. So after we record audio, we cannot do much, uh, you know, uh, but in iSpring you can uh, you can easily change the land of the uh, of the slide, of the borders, and uh, we record audio, make one audio play through several slides or through the entire presentation. So there is much more freedom, freedom and it's uh, more visually easy to understand and to work with uh, in iSpring Narration Editor. So, yeah, uh, the only drawback, are there any drawbacks of recording audio in iSpring? I would point out one, uh, uh, because uh, if we record an audio in iSpring, we cannot preview it in the normal PowerPoint slideshow uh, by function 5 key as I usually play back. So, but you can preview it uh, in Manage Narration window here. I can pre preview it here, or I can go back to the main ribbon and preview it by clicking this button, preview, or by publishing it to uh, to the web or to the local destination. And I would also show you how it will look like in the uh, after you uh, published it and uh, after you've put it on the website. So here is the narrated presentation here and we can see the video and slides uh, appear side by side. This is our uh, video lecture player. You can customize it uh, on the publishing step and uh, customization of this player uh, is also covered in our uh, support uh, section on the website and uh, in the video tutorials, so it's easy anyway, you can uh, you can get it. So as you, as you see, uh, there are little call-outs call here, uh, like when we need uh, a bigger video, a bigger uh, slide, like focus on some aspects of the uh, information of the, uh, on the PowerPoint slides. So it all can be uh, kind of programmed in uh, uh, in iSpring uh, uh, Manage Narration, uh, and uh, this is how uh, what you get in the output with uh, with iSpring. Uh, but if you want to uh, play your presentation in PowerPoint and you have recorded the audio in iSpring, it's also easy to go. Uh, to go to the project folder, pull out all these files and uh, throw them to your PowerPoint presentation to, to each slide, like here, it's, it's like drag and drop. So this is a video file, but if it, if it were an audio file, I would just throw it in here and uh, it would have been appeared as, as this one, as this audio. But, uh, in PowerPoint, you cannot do uh, video narration because it has only on slide view. But with iSpring, with this uh, video lecture player, uh, you can uh, uh, you can synchronize your uh, presentation with um, with video as well. So yeah, uh, I think I'm I'm done um, for for this part of um, uh, how to do that in PowerPoint and um, 
how to do uh, an, an overview in iSpring Suite. And I'm happy to pass uh, the microphone to my colleague Brian, who will guide you through the more detailed process of how to do that in, uh, in iSpring. By the way, Brian is an author of uh, uh, video tutorials on our website, so you might, have, uh, uh, you might already know his uh, voice. And uh, Brian? Yeah. Okay, hang on just one sec. Thank you, Michael. I just wanted to mention as well that, guys, uh, I see your questions in the question box, and we will definitely go over them in the Q&A section after Brian's part. So don't worry. We will definitely yeah, get back to you. Yeah, I saw here. those too. Right. Okay. Oops, hang on one sec. Okay, you see my screen? Yes. Hello. Yep. Okay, great. All right, so hi, everybody. Uh, it's Brian Tarr here. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the iSpring features, and uh, there will be some overlap with what Michael already discussed, but I really don't think it hurts at all to just repeat a few points. So as he showed you before, if you want to record, import, or synchronize audio or video narration, the narration editor is the best way to do it. You can record audio or video right away, piecemeal in the presentation, but my favorite tool is the narration editor. I never use those separate tools. So uh, the narration editor consists of several panels. Uh, let's first take a look at the toolbar here. So the Home tab holds buttons to create and edit narrations. And here you can import pre-recorded audio or video and then synchronize it with your presentation or record your narrations live and synchronize on the fly. And you can also edit your narrations with the built-in audio video editor or preview them with all animations reproduced. And the slides and narration video will appear next to each other here in the center of the screen. And the View tab allows you to activate the panels of the narration editor. And this is how it looks when all panels are activated. So the Slide Thumbnails panel shows all the slides of your presentation. And the Notes panel displays the slide notes, which is useful, for example, if you need a script. And audio and video tracks are placed on the playback timeline under the slides for more convenient synchronization. <clears throat> and as Michael showed you before, if you'd prefer not to synchronize your animations live, then you can just drag them to the correct locations on the timeline here. And it's worth mentioning here that if you want to see these yellow marks in the narration editor, then these animations must be on click. If you have them set to before previous or with previous or after previous, then they will not show up on this timeline here. So, which actually makes it much easier because whenever you add an animation in PowerPoint, then it's automatically set to on click anyway. So with iSpring, you just set it and forget it. And then later, you'll see it here. And actually, as long as I'm here in the narration editor, I saw a question about how to synchronize on the fly. It's extremely easy. You just click the sync button. And this is if you have pre-recorded imported audio or video. If you're recording, I'll, I'll show you those in a, in a sec. But here's how you do sync. Just click sync. And you can start wherever you want. Here I am. I'm starting on slide four, which contains these animations. You just click start sync. And as you can see, this this seek bar here is picking up all these animations waiting for me to drop them. And as soon as I click next animation, it'll drop it here on the timeline and you'll also see it there. So as you can see, every time I click next animation, it shows the animation there. And now the video's over, but it's still waiting for me to drop that next animation. I'll just drop the rest of these. And as soon as I click next slide, It'll take me to the next slide. 
So once you're done doing that, you can either click done, but actually I'm not very happy with that because it's not synchronized with the video at all. So ideally what you want to do is have it synchronized right with the video. So I'll just cancel that. And it resets it right back to where it was. And another thing I wanted to mention here, you might think that synchronizing animations like this might be really hard. But as you can see here in the audio, you have silence points. And, and it, once you get used to looking at audio waveforms, you can actually see where a certain word or phrase appears. So it's really easy to just line it right up. For example, right at the beginning of a sentence or right at the end of a sentence or something like that. Okay, so once you're done with all your narrations, uh, you click Save and Close, but what I'm about to do right here is show you recording features. So I'm just going to clear the timeline by selecting all these clips and pressing delete on my keyboard. You can also just click delete up here. Okay, let's save and close. Alright, so now let's talk about how to record audio narration. So there are two ways to record. You can either use the detailed narration editor interface, as I showed you before. And as I said, I, that's just what I prefer, but maybe you'll prefer this. Just like Michael said, you know, as soon as we added the narration editor, we had a lot of requests uh, to keep these features as well. So let's have a look. Yeah, hey, can I add a word here? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I remember uh, after we had uh, released uh, this uh, narration editor, in iSpring 6 point something, uh, our, our users urged us to keep uh, the, the simple record audio narration feature here. So that's why we have uh, two ways of, uh, uh, two options of recording audio, uh, either by simple recorder or by, by manage narration as you and uh, as me prefer. So, uh, yeah. Uh, instead of deleting this feature, we uh, listened and uh, improved it to match uh, to match our uh, new managed narration uh, architecture of uh, of this uh, narration uh, thing in in the presentations. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yep. We we listen to feature requests. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, as Michael showed you before, you can configure your settings here, and there's a great microphone setup wizard. And you can also use the drop-down list of all slides, so you can uh, choose the right slide to start recording from. And you can turn on the slide notes here to use them as a script. And if you want to process one slide at a time, you check this box, but you can actually go through the whole presentation just using this toolbox right here. Okay, so just use the Start Record button to start the recording process. And similarly to what I just showed you before in the narration editor, you'll see the next slide button, which will take you to the next slide as you record. And then if you come to a slide that has on-click animations on it, then you'll see the next animation button. And every time you click that button, not only will you see the animation, but it will be automatically synchronized with the voiceover as you record it. So if you don't have any voiceovers at all yet, then you can just record them live like this. But if you already have, say, professional voice actor sound files, or video files. You can just import them and synchronize them as I showed you before. And then once you're done, just click Stop. And you can click OK to return to the presentation. And all the audio narrations will be added. And we'll take a look at those in just a minute. But first, let's move on to video narration. So PowerPoint cannot record video narration, so it's essential to have a tool like iSpring to help you out. If you, if you want to create a nice video lecture the way Michael showed you in that 
video lecture player where your narration video and slides are perfectly balanced, you got to have a tool like iSpring. So this process is very similar to recording audio, so we can just briefly go in here. The major difference, obviously, is here you see me on my webcam. And uh, you can also configure webcam settings here. You can set a resolution. 640 by 480 is, is pretty good, I would say. You could change it to 1280 by 720 if you want to have widescreen HD. And just start record. And just as you saw before, you can have slide notes here. And you can synchronize on the fly with all your animations. So here we have some animations down here. And boink! Boink, boink. So, it's perfect. Now just click Stop and click OK to return. Alright, so now I've recorded some audio and video narration, so let's go back to Manage Narration to see how it all looks. And this is my favorite part of the Narration Editor because, I mean, PowerPoint you just cannot get a view like this. I mean, you see everything here. Here's my audio, and there's my video. There's, there's just no way to see that in PowerPoint. And while you're recording in those previous modes that I just showed you before, you also can't really see a bird's eye view of how it all lines up with your presentation. And actually, I also saw a question related to the audio video editor which was what I was about to cover next. And actually, Michael did a really good job of covering pretty much all the features. So why don't I just show you how to remove noise? And you're absolutely right. Just like in Audacity, you select a section of noise and then just click Remove Noise. Do you want me to read the question, Brian? Yeah, sure. Read it out. It's from Dean, and he says, Audacity has to take a sample before removing noise. Does the iSpring Audio Editor need to do that, or does it have its own settings? Yep, you, you need to do that. So, as you can see, the, uh, the silence bar here is a little bit fuzzy. So you can just select a nice section of noise. And here, here are actually just instructions on how to do it, so you can check that if you don't want to see them every time. And as you can see hey. here, the, uh, the bar gets nice and crisp. What's that? Yeah, actually it's done uh, even better than in uh, Audacity, because in Audacity you, you first need to select it and get a sample of this noise, uh, then go back oh, to the true. noise removal and uh, apply it again. And here you, yes. you just select this thing and, and uh, it does, uh, does both taking a sample and removing noise from the entire uh, audio clip. Yeah, that's a very good point. Also it's in not... Audacity there are some, some settings that you have to configure, but uh, this takes all the guesswork out of it and does a really good job of removing noise. Okay, and uh, anyway, as Michael told you before, oops, you also can easily trim out little parts of your audio or select a part that you want to keep and then trim out the beginning and end. And of course, there's an undo and redo function. And the same goes for editing video. You can take out parts that you don't like or keep parts that you do. And you can also fade out, fade in, and it's just so fast and easy to do all this stuff. And as Michael said before, we're we're absolutely ready to receive feature requests in all these features. 
So yeah, that, uh, that about does it for my part. I'm ready to take Q&A, and I'm sure Michael will be happy to help me if there's something that falls out of my area of expertise. All right, so I think that right now we are ready to move on to the Q&A section, and I'm ready to uh, ask the first question. When I've recorded using my laptop microphone, a lot of background noise is also recorded. How much of the background noise is removed when using the narrator editor? All of it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I've, I've had great results. Oh, but here's something, here's something very important that you should keep in mind. Um, if, there's, if the noise itself is too loud, then removing noise, it doesn't matter what software you're using, removing that noise will also remove part of your voice. So your voice will sound hollow or, or tinny or something like that. So it's really important to try to minimize as much noise as possible in the input before you remove it. Yeah, I would describe it as a, as a digital water. It sounds like uh, yeah, like underwater effect, right? Yes, exactly. So then, guys, right. uh, sorry. Actually, had... sorry. That, that's yeah, yeah. another thing. It's extremely important. For example, if you have running water in the background, airplanes going overhead. If you hear an airplane going overhead that's really loud, you might just want to re-record that because, you know, there, yeah, there's a right. limit to noise removal technology. Or if you have a fan going, anything, try to eliminate as much as possible. And yeah, the, the noise should be, should be constant, so it should uh, go through the entire clip like, like an air conditioning or, or a fan. But yeah, it yeah. shouldn't be very loud, and uh, if it's uh, consistent throughout your entire clip, it will be removed just fine. But if it's some uh, sporadic noise like airplane or door uh, or doorbell, or anything like that, yeah. it will not be removed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dog barking. All right, so in that case, I would like to ask a question from Trem. Is it a good idea to get a separate mic via using the computer built-in microphone? I would say yes, because most laptop built-in microphones are just garbage. And also, I've even, I've even talked to some people on Skype, for example, who every time they use their laptop built-in mic, I could hear the laptop fan. So that was obviously bad engineering on the part of the laptop manufacturers. But no, I've never heard, I've never heard a good laptop mic. Yeah, that's, that's really true. up that's to you. Right. And well, uh, actually, I'm. Uh, you can refer to this uh, Riggs and Audi's, uh presentation. It uh, it features some uh, some good microphones from low to high budget that you can use for your voiceovers. And also, if you keep an eye uh, on our blog, uh, an article uh, about selecting a good microphone for a voiceover will be uh, released this month. So. All Just right. keep an eye cool. on our blog, and uh, you'll have an answer there. And I also sent a link to the Rig uh demo in the chat messages, so you guys can check it out. And then the next question from Tram as well. Is the audio-video narrations feature available in the trial version so we can test it out? Yep, all features are available. The only difference is you'll get a, a little eye spring watermark on your output, but everything else is 100% functional. Right. Um, so a question from Irina about uh, synchronizing animations with audio. Thank you for the sync explanations, but if I don't have animations on click but with after previous and I don't see the yellow marks, how can I sync the audio file with the animations on the slide? I'm so glad somebody asked me about syncing animations because I forgot to mention one awesome thing. Uh, so before I show you that, let me just show you. Remember, you might remember that when I was recording, I snapped my fingers at the same time as I was synchronizing the animation. So as you can see here, not only do you see my fingers snapping, but you also see this little audio event here. So that's 
how cool it is to synchronize animations in iSpring. And as for on-click animations, let's get out of here. So you go to your animations tab, and if your animation is not on click, actually it might be easier to just pop up the animation pane. Yeah, you can just uh, select all animations by, yeah, by control you can just A. Yeah, select them all, and then just do on click. Yeah. So yeah, if you, if you have animations that are after previous or with previous, then just select them all and make them all on click and then you'll see them all on the timeline. Yeah, you know by default uh, they are always um, added as on click animations so yeah. uh, the question, uh, it, it's actually harder to align uh, up animations in PowerPoint uh, because yes. you need to select every animation and then uh, turn it to uh, after previous or with previous which is not convenient at all. At all and you have to you have to use all these little bars here. Yeah. <laughs> you have to drag yeah. all these tiny little bars around and say, oh man, where, what? Oh, the... don't show it. <laughs> okay, okay, never mind. Everybody forget that. Can you unsee <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, you know, I, I've seen a lot of presentations uh, with crazy complex animations, uh, like you can see in our uh, demo sections on, on our website. Attention grabber. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, attention grabber is, it, it is awesome, but it has so much work. Not only drawing work uh, of, of all the objects, but also uh, of aligning animations in PowerPoint. It's, uh, PowerPoint is, is just not for creating uh, cartoons or some complex animations, but people do that, and uh, it is a huge... Uh, I mean, it's a huge, task. huge respect to them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, can I can I move on to the next question now? Yeah, move on, move on. Go ahead. Perfect. Um, a question from Dean. How easy is it to also add background music as well as audio narration? Oh, yeah, that's also easy. So just go to Manage Narration. Oh, you know what? I forgot. They moved this uh, feature back to... Uh, the, the Presentation Explorer. Right, so just go to the Presentation Explorer and here there's a playlist column. So if you don't already have a playlist you can go to Manage Playlists. You can create a new one and populate it with audio tracks. So then just you know go to any place on your computer that has audio tracks and you can select as many as you want and it'll import them in and then once you're done just close it we can rename this and just do example so then you can just select the example playlist and it'll play all those tracks back to back and if you don't select a different playlist on the next slides, then it'll just play the example playlist for as long as it for as long as it goes. And you can also choose if it gets to the end of the playlist, you can also choose whether or not to loop it. So if you do choose to loop a playlist, you can just set set the playlist for the first slide or whenever you want it to start and it'll play through the whole presentation. Oh, and as soon as you want it to stop, you know what? I think you should have it all. Just select all the slides and then go to the playlist up here and do that. Right, and as soon as you want it to stop, then you select none. That's how it goes. All right, great question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it, it has been improved uh, since last release because... Uh, before that, we we could only have one background audio uh, through the entire presentation. But now you can manage uh, like slides that uh, that are good with the background music, or slides that might might feature some video that will have overlapping sound, which is not cool. Yeah. So. 
Okay, and uh, then we have a question from Robin. Is it possible to reduce the output volume of the video file that iSpring produces? Yeah, sure. Hang on just one sec. Let me uh, get out of here. Right, if you do want to save your changes, make sure to click Save and Close, but if you don't, just X out and click Don't Save. Right, so back here once again in the Manage Narration tool. Just select your video or audio file and go to Edit Clip and Adjust Volume. And as you can see, the waveform changes to reflect the volume adjustment. And Thank it's you. as simple as that. Yep. Yeah, I would also add that um, I I really recommend uh, you using this uh, microphone wizard before you start recording because uh, this microphone wizard will uh, will set the the recording uh, signal. Uh, like on the on the normal level, so you will not have these uh, clip effects uh, when oh, when right. you, uh, when your audio information is lost, and neither you you will have too too low level of the recording audio. So uh, you use this uh, audio wizard, you you make sure that uh, uh, it'll be it'll be okay. Yep, great advice. Thank you. And a uh, question from Laura. If animations are on click, does that mean someone viewing the playback has to click to keep the slide advancing? No, no. If you have on click animations and then you synchronize them with your presentation like this, then no, they don't have to click. But if you do have uh, if you do have on click animations and you don't have any animation or sorry any uh, narrations at all, then yes, they will have to click. Thank you. And uh, a question from Trem. So you are creating a training about navigation through a website. How do you zoom into a specific section of the screen while you are narrating? Is that possible? Well, in in Windows, you mean like uh, like the magnifier tool that I used? I actually it has a shortcut Windows Plus or Windows Minus. Right. You can, you can check it out. I think it was it was in refer, refer to to the magnifier. Yeah. And you know what else I noticed while you were sharing your screen? Uh, it didn't show the magnify effect. Yes. When you go to webinar. Yeah, because it wasn't on another screen. Right, right. Yeah, so Windows key plus or minus, or you can go Windows key R and just type in magnify. But we don't have a built-in feature, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. And uh, a question from Nana. How many characters are available on the trial version? Okay, so as we mentioned previously the trial version has every single feature that the full ver full version has it's just a watermark on the output so you get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten characters and of course you can always get more characters by clicking this button right here yep and I think it refers to the question from Arthur do you need a special version of iSpring to customize the player and its features? Or maybe not. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. And just FYI, if you want to customize your player after you select it, just click Customize here. First click Publish, then select your player, and then click Customize. And you can customize all the features like all the elements of the player and the colors there are a bunch of built-in schemes here and the text labels and it has a bunch of built-in language presets and when you're done apply and close oh you know what here in the video lecture player you can also change which side the slides are on and which slide the videos on that's really useful 
and applying close. Hey, and what about uh, uh, like these call-out effects where you have bigger video and bigger slide? Can you please show them a um, uh, presentation explorer thing? Yeah, because it's not on the on the customized player window. Here you, you can customize the the look of your player, but uh, the, the behavior uh, of the slide to uh, to right. video ratio can yeah, be changed. Yeah, that's a good here. point. Yeah. Right. So here in Presentation Explorer, you can change the layout automatically. So, for example, full in the video lecture player shows the slides and video side by side in equal size. The no sidebar shows the slide maximized with the video off to the side and maximized video shows the video maximized with the slide off to the side and you can change that automatically during your presentation thank you Brian and we also have a question from Dean besides the video resolution are there options on where and what size the video appears or is it only side by side so Oh, I think we just covered that just yep. here. Yep. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question, Dean. And uh, we also have a question from Arthur. Can you edit the HTML output and its inserted JavaScript file? I think Michael can handle that one. Uh, say it again, uh, HTML. Can you edit the output. HTML output and its inserted JavaScript file? Well, you mean, after, yeah, after you publish your presentation and you get your HTML index HTML file and uh, a bunch of other HTML files, can yeah, you incorporate I, I, the I think so, and if we're not correct, Arthur, could you please let us well, know? Well, you can modify the index file. Uh, for example, you can uh, insert uh, Google Analytics code here. Uh, in the in the index file after right after you publish so this is the main file uh, that uh, users users will launch to see the presentation however I wouldn't recommend you modifying uh, any of the files uh, in the data folder after you publish so just uh, uh, yeah j just customize the, the index file and don't customize uh, any files in the data folder because you're presentation can uh, can appear incorrectly after after that and yeah. how how can he add the JavaScript functions well depend depends on what functions right yeah, probably probably you know uh, what functions you're talking about right <laughs> the basic ones this was the response uh -huh. um, yeah like uh, Google Analytics code or uh, actually, there is an article about uh, adding some JavaScript code in in the uh, QuizMaker, but it's kind of uh, different different topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I so, think that uh, we actually might have a separate webinar sometime soon about the JavaScript possibilities. So if you want to yeah. keep an eye on our webinars, that'll be awesome. Hey guys, you know what? I, I wanted to mention real quickly to Dean, if we're done with that question, mm -hmm. about different places you can put your video. So the video lecture player, as Michael showed you, shows them side by side and you can adjust the ratio. But the universal player, what this does is it shows the video right up here in the corner. And you can also swap the video and the and the slides. So if you want the video to be a little less intrusive and maybe up here in the corner, then you're welcome to use the universal player. Thank you, Brian. That's it. Sure. And we also have a very specific question from Robin um, about the done button in iSpring, I would recommend Robin, you contact our support at iSpringSolutions.com and they will be happy to analyze the case for you. And also, guys, I think that at this point we are ready to wrap up, but before we do that, maybe you can 
have a little suggestion about the external microphones brand or model. Any ideas on that? Well, uh, I use an MXL 770. How do you like it? I'm happy with it. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's great. Do you mind putting it in the chat? Yeah, sure. Not at all. Hang on. Let me find it. Uh, okay. Yeah, actually, can you give me a uh, presenter? Oh, yeah, sure. Hang on. I'll do it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so here's the um, quick overview of the Riggs and Artists. No, Riggs and Otis presentation. Uh, here's the basic setup. Uh, you can use like a headset microphone. Uh, Windows uh, have really good headsets for uh, voice over, um, like for uh, voice over IP for Skype and for uh, uh, for phone conversations. But uh, it it kind of uh, kind of good for. Um, for audio narrations, it's much better than built-in microphone, as Brian mentioned before. But if you need real professional quality of the microphone, you you would need to get uh, not uh, not the only microphone, but also some external uh, device that that connect that's connected to your uh, computer. It's like an USB external audio interface shown here. Um, and uh, any of these uh, microphones will do a really great job. We are using MXL at iSpring. And also I heard that uh, Rode microphones are one, one of the best. Uh, also everyone probably knows uh, Shure microphones. And all other, uh, all other choices are, are also, also great. You'll get like, the best audio. Uh, for for less uh, budget or for for higher budget, uh, depending on the microphone you you use. Like MXL uh, has an average price; it's not uh, uh, ridiculously pricey, and you can buy them at any of these uh, stores like B and H, Amazon. And just so you know, guys, I put the link to the Rig Sonatas example in the chat section, so you're more than welcome to, to check it out. Okay, I think that we're ready to wrap up now, and uh, I would like to thank Michael, Brian, and Valerie for being here today with me and uh, covering that really interesting topic about adding audio-video narrations to the courses. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you, Paulina. Great webinar. And thanks to our awesome audience for great questions. Thank you, guys. And if you have any uh, other questions, you're more than welcome to contact us after the webinar. And you can do so by sending us a message to customer.care at iSpringSolutions.com. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and we'll see you at the next webinar. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.